Hello once again. This is Chris here in good old Watford, and there's Desi over there. Hi, Desi. Hi from Bushy. From, from Bushy. <laughs> near just, Watford. Near Watford. Yeah, just a, a just a a stone's throw, but probably out of the fifteen minute town area. <laughs> anyway. Oh. <laughs> anyway. Uh, Welcome to another uh, edition of our podcast, Awaking Happiness. Today we have an interesting topic, how can I be more creative? Uh, yeah, interesting one because, uh, yeah, people, uh, 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 the jury's out on some people who think they're not creative and they might be, but they might not know how to. Yeah, be more there creative. is this question why are some people creative and other people are not creative? And no. we tend to disagree with this statement, <laughs> don't yeah, we, Chris? So, yeah. So anyway, if you if you like the series that we're we're doing and you enjoy these podcasts, then uh, just click on the uh, subscribe button below, tick the little bell there, just to ensure that you get notified when we post a new one up on the on YouTube, and uh, and and like it and watch like it till it, the like end. It. Thumbs up! Thumbs up! <laughs> and comment <laughs> do all those things if you feel like it uh, obviously it's not obligatory uh, but anyway so today um, yeah creativity now just as a, 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 a getting the getting the topic going when I was at um, at school I used to dread artwork to be honest to like the art session because I didn't consider myself having the wherewithal to wield a brush, <laughs> a paint, and make anything that looked half decent on a piece of paper. So I didn't really enjoy those sessions. I felt they were a little, uh, I don't know whether I felt like I should be producing something that Van Gogh might be proud of or, <laughs> or whatever. But in in actual fact, I found the whole art session pretty pretty mundane, boring, and I didn't feel like I was able to express myself. So I came out of school feeling like I would, could be a decent copy artist. I see something and then draw what I'm looking at. But in terms, of, it's not very creative, really, is it? I'm, not really, I'm just copying what someone else has done. So I kind of felt I wasn't really very creative. That's That was my deduction when I came out of school. Don't think like that now, but that's what I started off like, just to put it in perspective. That's where I began my, my questioning of whether I'm very creative or not. But if you think back into your earlier childhood... Did you like drawing? I like drawing trees. You like drawing trees? <laughs> yeah. No, <laughs> you no, like drawing trees? That. Because there is this art um, theory that when we are very young and we start to learn about the world, we start noticing shapes and animals and we make sense of it. So we know that a cow is a big animal which has four legs. And it could be spotty sometimes with bigger blotches of, of black or maybe sometimes white, maybe brown. So, so we start to notice things and our brain begins to generalize. So when we now see a cow, we don't need to look at the details. We just have a glance and we know this is a cow. And we look at the dog and we know this is a dog. And we don't look at the details. We don't need to be studying the dog to make sure that it's a dog. <laughs> when we look at it, we already know. So the brain already starts to generalize and to save itself energy and work. mental power, <laughs> work. So we now know. So we, we stop looking at details. At a very young age, maybe three, four, when we start to understand what this animal is, we stop looking at the details. And I'm taking a simple example of an animal. But it's the same for everything. So we stop noticing shapes, lines, dimensions, and, and the correlations between 
length of lines here and there and what way and that way like we lose this very very early because our brain thinks okay i've learned that now i can generalize and let it on a like i've got the i've got the knowledge on this i don't need to tap into that anymore i don't, I don't need it i need to learn something else i need to now start saying um i need to focus on my language so i can express myself and you know that takes some more effort as well and it seems like when you ask a person draw me a picture an adult and they start drawing their drawing is at the age of what five four it froze at this stage and you will know by the when, when an adult start drawing you will know what age they froze their well not froze but at what age their brain started generalizing and <laughs> going back to that age and starting to learn new things like noticing or where is this line going like you said you like drawing trees maybe i can now see if i can draw a cow and i'm gonna think about this oh what does a cow look like how long is, are the legs how big is the body how big is the head you know the, the correlation like how big with regards to one another so it's a proportionate kind of picture of a, of a cow or same for a dog or anything else so the difference between an artist and a person who stopped drawing at the age of four five six you know they, they realize that's it I've, I've done learning about the world now I don't need to represent it that's it I'm, I'm going on autopilot with this one the difference between these two types of brains is that the one didn't stop and were more curious for longer and started noticing and saying, oh yeah, I can see this line, like I can see a printer in front of me. There's the printer, oh, that this line goes a little bit at an angle towards, so if I were to draw this, I'm gonna be drawing like da, 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 da. So it's noticing, it's actually training the eye again to see things. It's not. It's nothing to do with the hand, it's to do with, with the eyes. <laughs> So that's the creative when we talk about drawing an art. If you can hold a pen in your hand, you can draw. But like you just having need to train your eye. <laughs> yeah, no, but like but like that that isn't where it stopped because my I can tell you straight away whether a picture has got good perspective or not. I'm very, very good at noticing perspective and drawing perspective so that everything flows in a 3d manner and is the right size for where it is like mm -hmm. in the picture that 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 skill i have right and i think if you've got good hand-to-eye coordination like you're good at sport certainly ball sports and racket sports you have to have that perspective. Yeah, otherwise you're going to be constantly losing the, the ball. You don't know yeah, where you, you're not going to be able to hit the damn thing. Yeah. <laughs> so, so <laughs> <laughs> I think, and and like creativity isn't just drawing a picture, is it? Like yeah. So we started talking about this because you said about art at school, yeah. and that's what that's what. Most people, the, most people's art. early introduction into that is draw me a picture of mummy and daddy and you get two stick insects. <laughs> and that's again the yeah. generalization. This this line represents the body, this these two the lines and the arms, and there's two for the legs. And there's it's, this round thing. So the, the generalization has already happened. Yeah. Unless you teach the child to start thinking, okay, let's let's see, there are there are here, there are shoulders, and there yeah. are like I used to draw a stick and a stick man until my mom said, Right, I don't look like that. Let's see what I look like. <laughs> <laughs> I've got shoulders. Where are the shoulders in this picture? Oh, 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 let's draw the shoulders. And it was amazing. I remember I was probably five, six, I don't know. And all of a sudden I create a picture that looks like a human being. It's Whoa! Like, it's like, look where my eyes are. They're halfway up my head. <laughs> 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 
He's like, there's a couple of, I gave my hair a couple, he's wispy hair now, but like when, when you're young, it's like, hang on, the hair's down here. Like that's already a third of the head. <laughs> <laughs> so, but like what I was coming on to was like with table tennis, you have to be creative to win the game because you have to outsmart the opponent, which means you have to make, you have to create a situation where you have a higher probability of winning the point and do that for a number of, you know, six point, you know, like, you know, like six out of five times you're going to win the game, you know, like, or, you know, like out of, if you win six points out of 10, you're going to win the game, you know, like if, if you do that. So it becomes a, a different proposition when you look at it. It's an art form. Well, as lots of people consider, like I never thought about table tennis as being creative until you now mention it. Well, you have to create so a game. Everybody, everybody is creative in what when they're living their life. They, they're being creative already. It's just a different type of creative. So whether people want to be creative and uh, whether they consider that somebody is creative if they make crafts. Oh, um, you're very creative. You have you you're doing crafts, but so are you. You are oh. gardening. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you like are creating something as well. Or yeah, so, are you are driving. Yeah, you're creating something. Movement. Movement. Just so making through, sure you don't crash. <laughs> yeah, through knowledge of driving and a presence of a vehicle and your capability to operate it, you're creating movement. It's like um uh you know, like wood. Yeah, you know, when I when I was working in in London uh, as in a software company, it turns out yeah, I was like about twenty three, I guess twenty four, and I moved into sales, and all of a sudden I was presented with the need for a diary, the need for making appointments, the need for scheduling things, the need for putting all this thing together because there was a lot of different things going on that I will need to know where people phone numbers and I need some space for notes and stuff. And I, I was thinking about all this. And I thought, I want all this in one place. I don't want to have to be scratching around in a filing cabinet to find this stuff. I want it all at my disposal, right? So basically, I invented a little booklet. We had some little small folders we were using for some kind of glossary of terms for the software. And we were just putting building the glossary of terms inside this little it's only about about this big, you know. Anyway, I started to use it, and I thought, okay, I need some calendar stuff. So I got some, you know, I prepared some. I just drew it, you know, like drew it with a pencil, you know, like and put the dates in and copied it, and then just put the others in. And then I got, you know, like a notes page with some just lines on it, notes at the top, and I just copied that and put that in there. And then I got some address stuff and or the space for, to write addresses, and you know, this this kind of this kind of thing um and i started using it and people were going oh that's that's nice can can you make me one of them <laughs> right so i ended up making them for all the sales force and then the next year guess what came out filofax came out the next year and people started to buy the final faxes because they 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 were all printed and nice and they've lots. Why of didn't you make it into a product? Well, well, because I was just working in sales. I just wanted something that helped me do the job. I wasn't interested in being in the final fax business. Um, but, <laughs> but anyway, anyway, this goes to show you, I was creative, yeah. put in that in that position of like wanting to do my job easier. I created something which made that that's creative isn't it it is it's, it's just not drawing a different a, type of creative it's not yeah. drawing a picture so what i would say to people if you're watching this is like how are you creative because you are creative you're creating something you can't go around through life and not create anything you, you have to be creating something like for example when i was writing some software back in 2000 there was no software, and then there was software. Where did that come from? It came from here. Well, is that not creative then? <clears throat> is that not creative? The allotment was a flat bit of ground. Now it's not a flat bit of ground. How, how's that worked? <laughs> That's creative. It's creative. Isn't it? Yeah, it's creativity. 
you know, you, you've, create, you've created booklets. There were no booklets. Now, there are booklets that you've created, you know, like the, the um, journals. The journals, yeah. You know, we were talking about another journal yesterday, weren't we? A journal about... Um, uh, journals about the topics we're discussing here, yeah. And including my artwork. That kind yeah, of yeah, like it was a journal about what? What was it about a journal about? It was a journal about, about... about journaling, like giving people suggestions on what to journal because lots of times people struggle with, okay, well, I'm new to this journaling thing. What do I write about? What do I write about? Yeah, like, yeah. well, I had a cup of tea or, uh, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> am I supposed to be, am I supposed to be writing about that? Or am what I supposed? write about my day yesterday dear diary like we learned at school dear diary yesterday was a nice day i had a birthday cake <laughs> yeah. and then the day after uh, yesterday nothing happened full stop i'm not journaling anymore yeah. this is boring but if we have a if we have a, a journal with prompts of questions like we're discussing here um that could lead to a lot of self-reflection and knowing yourself mm. yeah so so some I mean, people say okay um artistic people are those who are willing to express their their feelings more openly than other people um we are saying here artistic people we're all artistic people we're all creative and it's just a matter of maybe allowing ourselves to uh, to admit that to ourselves and to not <laughs> carry out this. I think I mentioned it you know, on another episode where um, I had this belief that I am not an artist, therefore I can't use oil paint. Yeah, you're not in the club of oil painting people. I am not allowed to have oil paint because it's only for artists and how ridiculous is this idea? <laughs> but I lived with my, with my, I don't know, when my mom probably, at, when I was, well, four, five, six, she, she mentioned, oh, no, no, I'm not buying you these oil paints because you're, they're for artists. And that kind of stuck with me. Mm. Obviously, she didn't want to buy me those, maybe because she couldn't afford them or because I had other paints and I could use them. I didn't need exactly so probably, oil paints. Think, yeah, you haven't mastered water paints yet. I'm not buying your oil paints. Exactly. We're getting, we're getting a right old mess with those. <laughs> so we're not buying it. They're for artists. She didn't want to say they're not for you. She said they're for artists. But that still was, <laughs> was enough for me to, to believe that I'm not allowed to have them. <laughs> So well, that, what and beliefs that, and do you that, have about creativity? Some, some of them are ridiculous. <laughs> and that, and that belief, but that, but that belief there, like oil paintings are for artists, sticks with you until you're forty or whatever. Absolutely, when you think, yeah. Where, where, where something where the parent has just said, right? How do I dissuade this enthusiastic kid from having oil paints? I just tell them they're for people not like them. Right, yeah. and and basically, oh, well, that's it. That's it. Until I become an artist, like sometime never, I can't use oil paints because that's what Mum said when I was four. And it's like but it could be if you think about this as one example of creativity being stopped. Um, uh, then then there is this other thing like, oh, you're not a gardener, you can't be making a garden. Or you are not a mechanic, you can't learn to fix your car. Yeah. You are not this, 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 you can't you're not do an engineer. That, that. You're not an engineer, you're not a washing machine engineer. So don't even think about trying to replace a door. Exactly. Yeah. It's like these are limiting things that we we adopt because we kind of we know we're not a washing machine engineer, but it doesn't need a washing machine engineer to replace a door, right? It needs to buy the right door and, and watch a video which shows you how to do it. Right? Yeah. It's, not, it's not, you don't need to be a washing machine engineer. I mean, to, 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 to build a garden, 
right? And you know, we're writing a, we're writing books about our blogs about where we're going. You don't need to do all that building. You know, there are, there are people down there that just put a spade or a fork in the ground, took out the weeds and put some stuff in, right? That's it. That's a garden. You know, like that's someone growing vegetables. You can get fancy with it. Of course you can. And you can express yourself. Like like we've said on other videos, uh, like I found that it's the, the capability to express my creativity through having an allotment having been learned how to you know it's very simple cut wood and but the, the and, and how to use my imagination to imagine how it might look once i've done what i'm planning to do and that's the creativity bit is mm. yeah the, the other stuff's mechanics you know like driving a car like everyone can do it yeah it's easy blah 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 but you've got to have a car right you've got to learn how to drive and you've got to have a desire to go somewhere. <laughs> Unless those three things are present, you're not driving, are you? <laughs> and, and this is again back to creativity. Oh, I'm gonna I don't I want to go somewhere because I want to find out something, I want to see something, I want yeah. to that's, um, a, that's movement and a destination, which or comes I want to here. go to work because um they rely on me at my job or something like that. Yeah, but I mean, we were we were mentioning something earlier about or what was it? It was something in a different direction about uh, people's creativity and was it that the beliefs that we were that we all have about creativity being a very narrow strip of of thinking and and doing and activity and it's not but within that label say having children and family doesn't doesn't belong that it, it's not this is not if you have a family this is just what you do it's nothing to do with being creative <laughs> do yeah, we well, agree on that well no. Um, no we don't because you know like creating a family this is the the uh the clues in the name isn't it <laughs> You know, there's, there's got to have, so there's got to be some things in place there before a family can be created. You know, like and so, yeah. Anybody that's got a child, or you know, like there's there's a creation process that's happened there. Okay, the 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 legwork, if you like, is done by the woman in terms of creating the physical entity of the child. But I it didn't it, it couldn't have got going without some other input from the man. <laughs> However small that ends up being, it doesn't matter. It, it, you have there had to be a union of some description so um yeah that's create that's creative you know what happens thereafter is a constantly evolving process of creativity you know you could create a you know happy marriage you can create a bigger family you can create uh happiness or or yeah or or misery <laughs> uh, and divorce you know every every part of it is possible and whether it's created purposefully and with intent or created on autopilot, the point is it's being created anyway, isn't it? Whatever, you know, like maybe so, not. Yeah, so maybe we need to, what we suggest that uh, people could reflect on is instead of thinking, oh, how can I increase my creativity? How can I be more creative? Let... <sighs> Take the burden of yourself of thinking that creativity equals painting, art, crafts, and all of this. And think about it as a wider thing that is you do it anyway without even thinking. And start to kind of uh, give yourself some give yourself some um, rest, some what's the word? Give yourself a break. Give yourself a break. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Give yourself a break from labeling yourself. I'm not creative. I need to be more creative. And yeah, think I mean, about. I mean, I am <clears throat> creative. I've created all my life. Whatever is around you is your creation. Well, it's another point whether you like it or not. And if you if it's not very nice, maybe you can change it. You can do things about and 
find ways to to manifest a different reality but it's all we're all creative at all times while we're breathing we're creating we don't even we don't even know we don't even recognize that being, we're being creative i think that's one of the the issues is that we get this idea that painting at school because it's early and it's very it, it, yeah every every kid you can give them a brush or a pencil and you can ask them to draw on a bit of paper and they can all handle that bit once they can learn how to hold the the the, the pencil or the brush but consequently that our original thoughts about what creativity is is almost like penciled in at that age like you did with your mum you were saying like oh all paintings are not for artists but at that age you know we and then what happens is is that if we're in a classroom with other kids we can see what they're doing and we go oh they're better than me therefore i'm rubbish at art and we get we get this this perception built in at an early age and actually all of our life is creative you know we create a family we create this we create that we create a job we create a business whatever and this all stems really from us embracing the idea that we can be creative in all sorts of different ways even cooking like People go uh, home at night. They'll put the they'll put the slow cooker on. They'll cook a, a a quick stir fry, or they'll slap some fish fingers and mash bean uh, beans and mashed potato together. They'll, and it's a dinner. Or they'll put some cheese on toast and grill it, and then that's another another meal. Like this is creative. Okay, it might not be pushing the boundaries of creativity <laughs> at that level. But, you know, if you start investigating what a stew is or you say, oh, let me make a steak and kidney pie or let me make a curry or you start and you start experimenting and you're enjoying it and it becomes a hobby and it's a good hobby because guess what? It's a hobby where you spend time doing it and then you get to eat it. I, I always used to say this about beer. I made beer when I was like 18. I like I like beer. And my brother bought me for Christmas a beer making proper like bucket with a with a no no it was it had a heating element in it and it, you were allowed, you you basically cooked the beer and it got a recipe book and some basic ingredients it wasn't just a kit this was wow. like doing it from the grain and the hops and and, and all the basics and it turned into a like a massive hobby because at the end of doing it you got to drink it you know what I mean? it's, like, it's like i couldn't think of a better hobby do you know what i mean it was like hang on so you spend your time doing this and i like quite like doing it and we can have a drink while we were doing it It was great and then at the end of it you got some more beer which went into a barrel and you had some more beer and it was like it was like but when beer was, I don't know, 25p, 25 pence a pint, like a, not a very nice beer, but 25, it's the cheapest of the cheap. And I was knocking out beer for 3p a pint, and it tasted amazing. Wow. Right? So you're thinking to yourself, you know, and I had my friends around, and I said, you know, I'm not selling you the beer. You're not allowed to do that, by the way. And I used to say to them, well, just make a little donation <laughs> of around 10 pence a pint. <laughs> to help me pay for the ingredients for the next batch and i'm yeah. quite happy to do that when it was 25p for rubbish and 10p for making a contribution or a donation to using my parents house for them to go out the <laughs> <laughs> so so um, what i'm saying is is that yeah these things can end up taking a life of their own through your creativity you can then start to, like, if you really like it, you get really good at it, you can turn it into a business. And then what we were talking about in another video is like, well, find seven things you love doing and turn them into a place where they can earn money for you. It doesn't need to be much for each one, but collectively it's an income and you end up doing everything you like doing. Well, hang on, won't that mean I'll be happy? Oh, no, no, you're going to be <laughs> <laughs> oh no hang on i'm gonna be happy i can't, I can't. can't handle this <laughs> can't have that 
Yeah, you know, there's got to be some misery going on, isn't there? <laughs> Well, that's another one, maybe for another, for another episode. But yesterday I decided that I'm not going to be having the badge of honor of being constantly working hard. That's enough. I'm going to be creative about my, my, my life and I'm going to be enjoying it when I'm doing as much as I want. Without the constant, oh, you need to be constantly busy to be, or well, we had another episode on this busyness thing. <laughs> but not just busy, busy, but like really working. Yeah, I mean. It doesn't and, have to and, be all the time. You know, like, look, just another example, right? We got, <laughs> we, we got a bit of ground and we decided we wanted to grow some vegetables. Why? Because, you know, maybe vegetables and food will get short, and maybe we'll need that plot of land, right? So we turn it into Then we decide that we're going to make it as productive as we possibly can. So it means we're going to have to have some facilities, like a compost heap, like a cold frame, like a polytunnel, like, like just stuff to help with the production mm -hmm. of food and stuff. And then we need somewhere to sit because you can't be working all the time like you just said you've got to have some you've got to have a sit down like if you don't have a place to sit on allotment it's just all work and in the end it, it just wears you out and then so and then you say okay well maybe other people might like to do this and rather than just telling them maybe we just turn the blog that we've been writing and the pictures of each of the different development stages and we turn it into a book and then some people might like to have that book and it doesn't need to be an expensive book but if you get if there are i don't know three million people that potentially in the country would like to grow food or maybe 10 million then maybe a, a small percentage of those people might you know let's say 10 like one percent suddenly it's a hundred thousand people have bought a book you know like it, you see what I mean? It's like it's not, you know, like and no, and you're doing people a, a service because you're basically saying to them, "Look, this is what we did. Anyone can do it." You know, we know nothing special, really. We just mm -hmm. like enjoy getting out in nature and enjoying the sun and maybe the snow and and um, and be, doing a bit of exercise. And at the end of the day, you get some food to eat, which is nice. You can turn it into something, become something really nice. What, well, yeah, like that's a business opportunity come out of a hobby. Yeah. And you could do about anything, craft make, you know, even craft making, you know, like you could turn into cards for all sorts of different things, but they're handmade, you know, like they're, they're mm. you know, uh, food, you know, you, like you start cooking food and you decide you're going to have a restaurant or some kind or of. Or you can make a YouTube channel with all your recipes, showing people how to cook different recipes. Exactly. Like my daughter's constantly watching these and. And following the recipes and some of the nice things that she cooks, amazing. Well, look at look at um, look at my grandson who's now cooking stir fries because he watched a video I did on stir fries three times. Now, you know, it was just a bit of fun, just a bit of a laugh. I was cooking a stir fry anyway, so we decided to video it, and you did the editing, um, and we put it up on a channel and. Here we have a young 17-year-old now cooking stir-fries who never would have known what a stir-fry was a year before. Yeah. Uh, right. So, <laughs> yeah. No, no end to creativity. It can be... Exactly. We just need to stop thinking about it as being painting and think well, about it as being a wide range of... Well, well and, and, e and even worse than that, creativity is someone else's responsibility, not mine. I can't do that creative. I'm not an artist. <laughs> and what you're doing is basically saying all the things you are creating aren't creative. And basically this is like relabeling these things and saying, no, do you know what? We're all creative because, we're, like you said earlier, we're all breathing. Yeah. And you can't be breathing. You know, you're making carbon dioxide there, by the way. Um <laughs> <laughs> But the, somebody will say, no, no, that's nature doing it. It wasn't my conscious effort. Mm. Okay, well, your conscious effort is actually the result of your subconscious effort. So anyway, mm. that's a topic for another conversation, another maybe. Day, yeah. So 
enjoy being creative guys and if you like what we are talking about here do remember to subscribe and like the video and hit the bell hit the bell share and... it with others if you find it useful others will probably also find it useful um and see you on another episode thank you chris for no oh, thank you <laughs> sharing me... sharing your thoughts with thank us you. thank you for sending me the link otherwise you'd have been on here on your own okay. <laughs> <laughs> bye <laughs> Bye for now. <laughs>